Okay, we are rolling. Um, yeah, so for anybody that doesn't know who Leslie is, Leslie, just give a little wave. <laughs> uh, so Jake's story actually, like, straight up played matchmaker and hooked Leslie and I up together, and we were the only two that showed up on this premier uh, mastermind call together, and then we kind of said each other's stories and then realized how alike we were, and so then we just started this beautiful friendship from there, and now we've been doing some brainstorming stuff together, and we decided that it'd be really cool to... Um, kind of share team calls and that kind of thing every once in a while just to get outside perspective. Leslie, you're on who's downline again. I forget. Sorry, I know you're muted. Um, Barbie Kalev is like my right. Yeah, which is super sweet. So we've got Barbie Kalev's downline and we've got Lindsay Matway's downline. So it's um, either way, different downlines, different trainings and kind of some different mentalities and stuff and really good, um, well, similar mentality, I guess, but really good resource collaboration and stuff like that. So I'm going to go ahead and mute everybody. Mute all. Uh, sweet. Okay, I'm going to mute everybody. And then if uh, I'll hopefully leave a couple minutes for questions at the end. If I randomly have to run, it's because my nose is running like a volcano and I just need to go blow it real quick. So that's just that. All right. So today's team call, we are going to be talking about drum roll please, how to ride the roller coaster of entrepreneurship. And I don't know who has all read uh, The Entrepreneur Roller Coaster by Darren Hardy, but if you haven't, that is the first thing you should write down and you should buy that book on Amazon as soon as you get off this call because it is the bee's knees. I read that book and Rosalind can attest to this. It is on every single line. It's probably underlined in that book because I loved it so much and I took so much um, away from it. But this is actually not from that book. I mean, a few of them, the idea is probably... Uh, crossover, but this one I actually got from the 12 week year by Brian Moran, which I also really, really loved. And they had a graphic in that book talking about the five emotional stages of um, kind of change, I guess, and flux. And so that's where I got tonight's team call idea from because I, um, through personal experience, and I know we're all going through this too as entrepreneurs. Um, there's a flux and different changes of emotions, right? You start excited. It's kind of goes like this a little bit and it's ups and downs and it's not always just like, Woo, we're so excited. Sometimes you got to grind a little bit, right? So I'm going to share with you guys tonight the five stages of that emotional roller coaster that I just mentioned, as well as some awesome PD resources at the end. Um, but before I do so, I wanted to say three important things first, and you guys can make a list if you want. These are three really important things that I wanted to touch on. Uh, because I think that they have to do with uh, knowing what to expect and, and with expecting the unexpected as an entrepreneur. So number one for you all, DNA has nothing to do with your success. Zip, zero zilch, okay? That is awesome. Hard work will beat talent every single time when talent doesn't work hard and your genetic makeup has zero to do with if you will succeed as an entrepreneur or not. This is a really good thing because what will determine if you succeed is your habits, right? And there are so many PD books out there on habits and we preach this every day and the vitals, doing them consistently over time become habits, right? Your workouts become easier as you do them over time, drinking Chico every day, reading PD every day, inviting all this kind of stuff. Your habits are going to determine your success. So if you are not doing those things, you're probably not seeing success um, in your business or in your personal life or physical health or mental health, etc. Okay, so get to reading your PD because your success actually depends on it. Your thoughts become your habits and your habits become your life. So you get to determine that, which is really cool. Okay, so I'm getting a wicked glare off my glasses here. Um, anybody can do this job. You guys all know this, but it is showing up every single day consistently, trusting the process and remaining patient that's going to bring you success. You have to be willing to do what most people aren't in order to live a life that most people can't, right? You can't just show up and um, hear about all these success stories and be super gung-ho and excited about being a part of it and then not do anything and expect to make six figures. I see coaches that join and they, after two, three months, they're like, wait, I haven't made a paycheck yet. And it's like, well, because you haven't invited and you haven't done any of the vitals and you have to actually put in the work if you want to see the success, right? If you want to be making six figures a year, you've got to be making a uh, success club 10 every single month. You've got to be recruiting three to five coaches every single month. You've got to be showing up every single day on your own journey so that people can trust you and know uh, that you're going to be there for them no matter what. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, make fear your BFF. I almost chose a different B word for this one, but we'll say BFF just for the sake of the call. Okay, fear is a mental construct through and through. And it, yes, it fears a bitch, right? We know this. 
But do you guys know that 85% of the things that we worry about actually never come true? 85%, at least. That's like the stats, right? But that's the main majority of our fears. They don't come true. It's totally a mental construct. We create it. We assume that it's correct, right? Um, and then we base our truth off of that assumption, which is so insane, but we do it anyways. Okay, fear can also put us into the state of analysis paralysis, Quick raise of hands if you guys have ever been in analysis paralysis, right? You get overwhelmed um, and then you get nothing done, right? You're like, I have so much to do. And then you just freeze because you don't do anything because you can't because you're in analysis paralysis, right? It doesn't do any good for you. It doesn't do any good for your business and it doesn't do any good for your team. And this is a team culture. It's a team sport, right? We are all in this together. We are all lifting each other up and empowering one another. So if you get analysis paralysis, um, you're shooting yourself in the foot and you're shooting your team in the foot, which is not okay. So you need to learn to welcome fear as your companion, your trusty guide, okay, on this um, journey. And trust that when you feel fear, that it means that you're going to have an opportunity to grow as a person and get uncomfortable, which we know will bring us closer to achieving our dreams, right? Uncomfortability is where um, success lies because when we step out of our comfort zone, the beautiful things can happen. You've got to learn to stand up to fear, right? say, no, 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 biatch, you're small and you, <laughs> and you got to work through whatever scares you. It's really, really important. So for example, something that we all fear, um, or whatever fear comes up around this is inviting. And I just think it's so funny. Like, isn't it so funny that we get so scared before we send out our invites? We literally change our lives, every single one of us, I'm assuming for the better because of this company, but we're scared shitless because we think somebody might think something about us being salesy or a wiener or weird or whatever, right? Like, are you joking me? My life would not be what it is today if it would not be for coaching. And my health and my friendships and my finances and my mindset wouldn't be near what they are today. I would still be struggling um, back two years ago, Marie, would be still be struggling if I didn't have this company. So I just, you have to really constantly remind yourself I'm so grateful for what I have. It's my opportunity and my responsibility actually to share this with others because I would be selfish if I didn't share this with everybody else, right? So <laughs> if somebody wouldn't have asked me, if I wouldn't have actually messaged Ginny, who's on this call, what up? If I wouldn't have said, yo girl, what you doing? You look great. And she wouldn't have said, hey girl, I'm doing 21 fix. You want to join? And I would have said yes. If I wouldn't have said yes, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> like it's crazy. So you have to offer, you have to get over your fear, right? Make fear your companion and um, make her your BFF, whatever you want to call it, whatever B word you're choosing. Okay. And then you just need to get over it. You need to get over that fear of um, people judging you or fear of failure or even fear of success people have. Like what happens when I succeed? Okay. Um, yeah, I want to relate this to uh, waitressing. Has anybody ever waitressed on this call? Yep, a couple people. Oh, yeah, sweet. Almost everybody. That's awesome. Okay, so I want to relate it to waitressing just because inviting is kind of similar here and it's a good analogy I've got. When you're waitressing and you go to a table and it's after dinner and you ask somebody if they want to have coffee and they say no, you were not scared. You were not personally offended because they didn't want to have a little cafe after dinner right? You go to the next table in your section and you say, hey guys, would you like some coffee? And those people might say, yeah. And you're like, okay, sweet. Do you want cream and sugar? Right? And then the next table, they might say no. And then the next table might say yes. And it's not this, you don't take it personally ever. You're just offering what you have to this person. You're like, man, this coffee changed my life. My days go so much smoother. My digestion is great because of this caffeine. Let me just tell you, and some people are going to say, listen, I don't drink coffee. And some people are going to say, yo, hook me up. Okay. So you just have to keep offering. You have to keep inviting. One of the biggest um, and best models, I biggest, I don't know. One of the best models that I have used this year that has helped me so much throughout times of um, self-doubt and fear when I'm uh, to do with inviting is some will, some won't. So what? Who's next? And my whole team knew that I was going to say that because I just repeat that all the time. But it's so true, right? I have it written on my... Um, just pointing to God up there, but I have it written on my goal board because it's so true and I have to remind myself of it almost daily. Some will, some won't. So what? Who's next? Right? If 30 people say no to me, the 31st person might be like, oh my God, Marie, I need what you have to offer. Thank you so much for thinking of me. Right? And that's every single person on this call, whoever joined with you, that's, that can be that person. That can be the 31st person or the 54th person or the 107th person, right? You cannot give up on people. You cannot stop giving people chances, right? It's your responsibility to share it. Um, okay. And finally, number three, 
this is a quote from Darren Hardy. I think this one actually is from Entrepreneur Roller Coaster. It says, the most successful person in the room is also the one who has failed the most. Go fail. And I really wanted to talk about failure because this is an essential, integral part of the entrepreneur entrepreneur uh, roller coaster. Okay, failure is just feedback. It's actually so necessary to your success. You cannot succeed without failure, right? You can't um, gauge massive levels of success without coming along a few bumps and screwing up a little bit along the way. So failure is good. Do not dodge it. Do not try to avoid it. Move through it, right? You got to grow through it. So long as you pick yourself back up and you learn something from it and you carry on, you are not a failure, right? If you stop trying, then yeah, you are. But if you keep going and you learn something from it and you carry on, then it's just feedback. That's all it is. Um, riding the roller coaster of entrepreneurship has to be a commitment. Um, I want you guys to think about if you go to a theme park, I don't know if any, anybody's ever gone to uh, Disney or anything. I actually haven't been, but say like Knott's Berry Farm or something. Okay. And when you go to a theme park and you're going on a roller coaster, we're going to talk about a legitimate ride here. Okay. Just come with me on this journey. You pay a fare, you get strapped into a rusty old cart. They shoot you off on the tracks, right? You ride all the way up, you know doom is coming, and you're going up this rickety, shaky thing, strapped into this cart. You don't bail. You can't just jump out and be like, see ya suckas. No, like you ride it out till the very end, no matter how many times you pee your pants, no, many, no matter how scared you are, you go until the very end because you are committed to that ride right? Entrepreneurship is no different. If you want to see success, you have to ride it all the way. You have to ride the whole thing and see it through, right? You have to move through the uncomfortable situations and the uncomfortable um, learning curves because that's the only way that you're going to get better. It's the only way that you're going to uh, see success, okay? The only thing constant is change. Please remember that. The only thing constant is change, okay? So just welcome change with open arms. You need to expect that there's going to be ups and downs in your business, Nothing ever awesome uh, came easy, right? Nothing ever awesome. Nothing awesome ever came easy. And it's a beautiful thing because we get to grow. We get to learn. We get to fail. We get to cry. We get to laugh. We get to dust off our shit kickers and we get to try again, right? That's what we do. That's how we go, okay? Um, okay, so those are the three tips I wanted to give you guys on um, basically just knowing what to expect and expecting the unexpected. The next part, I'm actually going to take you on an entrepreneurial roller coaster. Uh, rides, you can see where you currently sit and kind of what to expect. And you can be like, oh yeah, I totally relate to that. That's where I was or am or um, can expect to be. Okay. And this concept is actually from the 12 week year. And this is what inspired this um, call. So I highly recommend getting that book as well. And I'll share the, I have five resources to share with you guys at the end of the call. Okay. So like I said before, change is uncomfortable. This is a good thing, right? You should be gauging your level of success by how uncomfortable you are making yourself daily. Okay, complacency is mediocre, and nothing mediocre or nothing beautiful ever ever comes from a level a level of mediocrity, right? And there's no way that any of you guys woke up today to be mediocre. There's no way. Okay, I know this for a fact. I can see it in all your eyeballs. So pull up your big girl panties and let's do this thing. Okay, let's make 2017 epic. So we're going to talk about five stages of the roller coaster here. These are tested and true, and they actually apply to way more uh, areas of your life than just business, but we're going to talk about entrepreneurship and specifically coaching because that's what we do, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so there's five. So number one, uninformed optimism. And I'm actually going to show you guys a little graphic here. I don't know if you can see very well because I turned my light. Okay, so this is number one. Okay, uninformed optimism. So this is the, yay, this is new and exciting stage. This is emotional driven. Uh, you start to, or you sign up as a coach, you get welcomed into new groups and stuff. You announce on Facebook that you're gonna do this thing. You're super pumped, right? You start up here. So this is emotion and this is over time. Okay, so you're starting stage one, uninformed optimism. We can all agree that that's legit, I think. Okay, and then... Number two, we kind of go down here as we like start our first month, second month, we go to informed pessimism. Okay, this is the, wait, how do I get people to sign up so I can actually hit success club? What do you mean I have to get vulnerable? This is kind of scary. How do you do this thing stage, right? We let self-doubt start to creep in. We validate naysayers uh, of their opinions over our own and we become small in our thoughts and the benefits don't really seem to outweigh the risks at this point and we start to question things. This is where a lot of people quit and actually kind of here's where a lot of people quit, right? They give up, it gets uncomfortable and they're like, you know what? See ya, this isn't worth it. I'm leaving. Okay. 
the third stage. <laughs> this one is called the Valley of Despair. Okay. This is the, oh my God, this is so freaking hard. Everybody is saying no. Everybody's quitting. I don't know if I'll make it stage. I'm going to be lit on fire right away and run around with my head cut off. Right. This is the Valley of Despair. Okay. We all go through this. This is when most people give up right between here and here. Okay. The uncomfortable feelings of facing our fears seem worse than going back to here where we started, where we decided, Hey, I want to make a change in the first place. And so we either quit and go back to square one or we somehow make it through and go to the next stage, right? This can actually also totally apply to a new workout program and a diet change as well. How many people have gone through, say you're doing 21 Day Fix Extreme or something like that or whatever for the first time and like week or a longer program we'll go with. Say you're doing 10 weeks of T25 and like week eight, you're like, man, I feel really good. I think I'll just eat that double piece of chocolate cake and I'll have a bottle of wine to myself tonight and I don't need to get my workout in tomorrow. <laughs> Back to square one right? Not okay. Okay. So value of despair applies to many areas of your life. Okay. Number four, can you guys see this? Okay. Can you just give me a nod. Yeah. Okay. It's really my best drawing. I know you know this. Um, okay. Number four, we've got, this is where you have informed optimism. Okay. This is the actually, never mind. I'm kind of in a good groove right now. This isn't so scary after all. I'm kind of starting to dig it. I just got to stay consistent with my vital stage. Okay. Your likelihood of success at this stage is way higher. If you were having fun and you were being excited and you're taking action instead of getting crippled by that analysis paralysis that I talked about, AKA fear, AKA the bitch that lives in your head, if we're being honest, right. And tries to stop you from living an epic life. If you are not letting that control you, then your likelihood to succeed goes way up. Okay. And then finally, Stage number five. This is the success and fulfillment stage. This is the like holy eggnog Batman. I'm changing people's lives. I'm changing my own life. I'm making a living for posting on social media. Are you joking? Living in my pajamas, doing a work call right now. Wearing pajamas. Okay. And I'm drinking liquid chocolate gold for breakfast with superfoods and my IBS is reversed. Like this shit cray. This is that stage right there. Okay. It's currently living that if you weren't aware. Okay. This stage is so fulfilling because it actually... The actions that once seemed daunting to you aren't anymore because they've become habits, right? And this habit theme comes up and up again and again and again because it's so true because the habits that you create for yourself are either going to work for or against you, right? It's a whole compound effect thing. And so if you routinely now go out of your comfort zone because you've been coaching for a while, you're routinely trying new things, you're picking yourself up. Up when you fall down and you're laughing fear in the face most days, right? We're all human. Some days you're going to get a little shaken. Some days you're going to fall down. And you're going to cry a little bit. You're going to have a smoothie. You're going to have a nap, maybe light a candle and you're going to get back up and you're going to try again, right? But we all know that progress equals happiness. Um, we know this. And so we need to remember it and we need to really focus on that um, uh, fact. Like I just, I get so confused actually when people give up on their coaching businesses after two months or six months or even one year, because I just think of, um, I think of post-secondary actually as an example. I think who here really quick, raise a hand. So I'm a teacher. So I always ask for raised hands, but really quickly who went to post-secondary? I just want to see kind of who did. Yeah. <laughs> I spent so many years. Okay. So this is my thing. Okay. I did. I spent six years and thousands of dollars and millions of tears and emotions and hours grinding it out uh, to get two sheets of paper to say that I'm qualified to do stuff, okay? And it was super uncomfortable at times, right? Staying up till 6 a.m. to write a 25-page paper is not very comfortable, right? Going to those classes and working extra jobs and having zero sleep and doing all these things is not a comfortable thing. But when you're in post-secondary, you validate it because you're like, well, this is just what I do, so I have to put up with it right? But for some reason, when we're in entrepreneurship and we leave one foot out the door, we give ourselves the excuse to get out when it gets uncomfortable. And that is not okay. You need to, as my spirit animal, Tony Robbins says, burn the freaking boats. Okay. You guys need to put both feet in and need to shut the door and set it on fire and say, see you later. This is me now. This is who I am. This is what I'm doing. Because otherwise you're not going to know your full potential and you're not going to know what's possible for you. Okay. Um, this is my last little like preachy spiel, but I think it was a good one. So I'm going to say this. Coaching is going to challenge you if it hasn't already. It's going to bend you and burn you and twist you in ways that you did not think you could twist. But if you stick with it, if you stay consistent and you trust the process, you are going to come out the other side of that fire, a new, improved, strong, and successful person. And that is how you survive the roller coaster of entrepreneurship. Mic drop. <laughs> 
I'm just joking. Okay, um, so I just, I wanted to make this as efficient and quick as possible. I'm going to share those five uh, resources really quick and then I want to open it up for questions and uh, conversation because I really love this topic. So my resources I want to share with you guys, uh, 12 Week Year by Brian Morin, if you didn't already write that one down. Entrepreneur Roller Coaster by Darren Hardy, that one is epic, really, really enjoyed that one. Um, the Four Agreements by D uh, Don Miguel Ruiz, I just actually finished that one. It's a quick read and it's really, really good. Basically touches on the four agreements you need to learn, uh, live in order to lead a, a happy life. And it talks about not taking things personally and not assuming. And it, I think it has a lot to do with um, us as coaches. And then my last two are actually by Brian Tracy. Eat That Frog is super good and Be a Sales Superstar. Be a Sales Superstar has a cover that looks really yucky and you're like, I don't know if I want to carry this around. But super good book and Brian Tracy is the cat's meow. So I definitely think that you guys should consider getting those resources. Yeah. So anyways, I'm going to um, unmute everybody just so we can have conversation if we want. And let's just open it up for questions because we've got a little bit of time left. Yeah, there's a sound. Okay, are there any questions specifically with this topic? And did I speak too fast? Don't leave me hanging. Okay. Um, can I have the first two emotional stages again? Yeah, for sure you can. First two emotional stages are uninformed optimism and informed pessimism. You know what? I have these notes on a Google... Uh, doc too, I can just share that if you guys want the notes. Yeah. Anybody else? Who's dealt with this? Like, who in here has actually dealt with like straight up ups and downs in their business? Anybody? Because like, man, sometimes it just rocks you to your core, you know? But it's so important to know that that's going to happen and it's so important to be okay with that flux and just be okay with some days it's gonna suck but that's with any job right this is a job and it's so beautiful and amazing and fulfilling so much of the time but sometimes there's gonna be stuff that you want to do like sometimes I don't want to send out new invites sometimes I just don't really want to you know but it's part of the job and it's part of being successful with it so I do yeah I don't know Leslie do you want to add anything no, dude, I think that was freaking, I'm like speechless because I think it was absolutely um, kind of good for new coaches to hear and even for older coaches to be reassured that like, I think the roller coaster happens at every stage in this business. So like even working through as a new coach, here's your first dip, um, but then it's like, the longest roller coaster at Wonderland. We're from Canada. So like everyone's into Wonderland, but like that dip goes up and down. And when you're pushing for stuff, um, you're going to hit that low every time. And it's, it's the true entrepreneur that comes back out on top every single time. Um, and consistency. So, yeah, no, I loved everything that you just said. That's cool. Good. Yeah. That's really good. That's good. Oh, that's up in. Jenny, what you got? You want to add to that? No, you killed it. I did a call on this too for uh, one of the bombshell ones. Um, like, and it, it will affect your life, like how your life is too will affect your business. Like I know like some of the low times of my business was when I personally felt shitty. Like I've gained like 15 pounds and I'm like, how am I a coach? And I just gained weight. Like, you know what I mean? But that shit happens. Like that's real life if you go through stuff. Um, and really it wasn't for a bad reason. I just wasn't being committed to my workouts, wasn't committed to my meal plan. I was traveling and having fun and I didn't regret it at all, but it was hard to work my business and hard to, you know, try and get people to join my challenge groups when I felt like I was the one who needed the challenge group, but I just refocused, you know, and like took a minute to sit down and be like, okay, what do I need to do here? Mm. And it was when I was moving. And so once we moved and we got here at Arizona, I was like, okay, I need to commit to a program. I need to go back to stage one of being a challenger and being a coach. So I went back and I started day one. I did a program start to finish and I shared the journey and people really respected me for it because I was being real and saying, you know, I'm not perfect. Stuff happens. Sometimes I gain weight too. And I've, other people can totally relate because there's times in your life when you're moving or 
you know, you've changed jobs or you have a bunch of kids or whatever the case may be and stuff happens and it's late or something crazy happens. So being real and sharing your story is like so key. Even when you are in those dips, obviously don't like complain on Facebook, but like figure out what you're going to do and then post on Facebook so you can stay accountable for your journey back up to the high part on your roller coaster. Yeah. <laughs> so true though. And I actually want to speak to one thing that you said there because I think it's so, so important to remind ourselves actually like daily. You can be reminding yourself of this daily, especially in a job that we uh, work on social media. It's super easy to fall into comparison. And somebody's jamming right now. Um, it's super easy to fall into that trap of comparison, right? I know that we're probably all guilty of it just because we're human females. That's just a thing that we do sometimes. But when you are posting on social media, when you are watching other coaches' posts, when you're watching other people's posts, if you're scrolling Instagram or whatever, and you fall into that comparison trap of their, that person's highlights, you need to have some kind of a trigger for yourself to get out of that. You need to log off. You need to go for a walk. You need to do a five-minute meditation. You need to do a workout. You need to have a tea, read a book hug your cat whatever the hell you need to do to get out of that state of mind because that is a downward spiral and that will affect you and it'll affect your business and then the second thing I wanted to say quick about what Ginny was saying like how it was hard to coach when you gain weight and you're moving and you're kind of out of sorts and your routine was um, off and stuff you have to know that just like your business is going to have ups and downs your life is going to have ups and downs too. And nobody ever experiences full balance. There's no such thing. You know, we all strive for this balanced thing, but this is how I like to uh, picture it. So say you've got like two buckets. Okay. Well, you've actually got like 10, but say you've got a health bucket, a work bucket, a relationship bucket, right? Sometimes your work bucket is going to be really full and your relationship bucket is not going to be that full. And then the next month you might have to balance. You might have to fill your relationship bucket a little bit and lay off work a bit, you know, in your fitness bucket and all your buckets are just going to be fluctuating all the time, but you're never going to achieve equilibrium. That's not human. That's not possible. So don't beat yourself up when you can't hit that, right? If you're going to have a shitty week, like Jill, I'm just going to call Jill out right now because she's having a really tough week because her boyfriend just left for school, right? That sucks. And I know that how that feels. And she's right now probably like, man, the last thing I want to do is like send out invites and be happy go lucky on Facebook. But she posted an accountability post in our team page. And I think that's so badass because you called yourself out on it. First of all, you asked for accountability and you showed up and look, you're here tonight. Instead of drowning yourself in a bottle of wine, having a bath and like singing John Mayer, you're here on a team call getting fed, right? I don't know. I think that's so cool. But you just have to know that it's, it's not always going to be perfect, but that's the beautiful part about it because it grows you as a person in so many more ways than you expect it to and, and just stick with it. Now I got preacher Marie on all of you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if there's no other, que- is there no other questions, cause if there's no other questions, I can uh, wrap it up real quick and we can, I'll put the recording up and send it to Leslie so you can share it with your team and stuff. Everybody's all good. Okay, well, thank you guys so much for joining. I hope that you gained something from this. Um, feel free to reach out anytime, and I will uh, put the recording up on YouTube and then share it to our team page. And with Leslie, like I said, as soon as I'm able to, my computer's kind of a dinosaur, so sometimes it doesn't like to do it quickly. Um, yeah, so anyways, thank you guys so much for joining. I really appreciate it, like, sincerely from the bottom of my heart, and I hope you guys have an incredible rest of your Tuesday night. Bye. <laughs> See you guys.